This is a bonus block for the Mastering the Minis course. This is a flower block. You've seen this block all over the place. It has contrasting fabrics on either side. Of course, I didn't use contrasting fabrics that are broad enough to bring them out. So I decided to change to these two colors for my block. This is a really easy block if you are interested in getting started in applique. Um, I'm going to start by I have two strips that are two and a quarter inch wide and now I'm going to have, I'm going to cut a four inch strip of both of them. So I have them just piled up on top of each other and I'm going to cut them so that I have four inches by two and a quarter inches. I'm going to stitch these two together and we'll get started with the appliqueing part. I have a little bit of extra on the sides just because a there will be a little bit of um, shrinkage when you're doing your applique. So for this, we want to have these two contrasting colors and we're going to use um, heat, and heat and bond fusible web. Okay, so I've already taken my design and traced out all of my design elements onto my heat and bond. This is the paper side of the heat and bond. This is the bumpy side, the glue side of the heat and bond. And what this does is it turns all of my piece of fabric into a sticker. I'm going to cut out the different elements. So I have three petals there. I have a circle center for another piece of fabric. I have a leaf for another piece of fabric. And then I have some circles, well, they're not circles, they're ovals, some oval flower petals for the purple. And so all I need to do is turn my fabric so that it is the right side down. You always want to put your heat and bond to the wrong side of your fabric because you're turning it into a sticker. And you don't need any steam with this. You just iron it down. And then the best results I've had are if I let it cool. So this is my wrong side up. And this is a perfect use for scraps. I'm gonna let these cool and then I'm gonna cut them out. You can tell I really like this green polka dot because this is all I have left. Luckily, it's enough for all of my, my two leaves and my stem. And then I have my purple and my beige, and I've decided to use this nice dark purple for the center of the flower. So I'm going to cut all of these out now that they're cool. I think that they cut easier once the fabric has cooled. And so now you notice that I had rough cut all my designs out. Now I'm cutting directly on that line. And just to be fun, I can start placing them into their order. Oh, it's so much better when you have a really good contrast between the two elements. Now I'm going to take the stickers off the back. So I should be left with a nice shiny backing here. That's the glue that I'll use to heat this on. If it doesn't leave that sticky, feel free to simply iron it again. And that should get you where you need to be. You'll know pretty quick if it hasn't worked. Before I 
iron everything down, I want to just double check that I have a good quarter of an inch all the way around my block so that when I go to stitch into my quilt, I'm not going to have any problems. Last thing I want to do is stitch on my applique when I'm putting it into my quilt. And then all I have to do is put it in place where I want it. And now I'm going to press. When I press, I press down like that and don't move. If I move it, there's the possibility that my applique pieces will move too. So once I have them pressed in place, then I can move things around just a little bit. And again, I like to let this part cool before I take it to the sewing machine. To stitch down the applique, I'm going to use a blanket stitch with Premium Invisible Thread by Sulky. It's um, very fine, um, almost fishing line type of thread, and I love using it for product, projects that have multiple different colors. That way I don't have to switch threads to match every single time I go to change a color. In my bobbin, I have my regular RFL thread is what I use um, by choice, and so that's what's in my bobbin as it has been in my project, and I don't have any problems. I like on these small projects, whether you're using a zigzag or a straight stitch or a blanket stitch like I'm getting ready to use, um, I like to make sure that I'm as close as I possibly can get without, you know, being stalled um, so that I can, um, the pieces are just too small to have too much of a big stitch. I like to start, if I can, off the fabric so I don't have to tack. I also try to combine elements as much as possible, so I'm going to go straight into my circle center. So all that's left with this little bonus block is to trim it up. And so you can see how there's been some shrinkage in on the sides and that will be cleaned up in just a second, along with all those stray threads. And now this little bonus block is ready to go into the quilt. Mm -hmm. 